and the readings will now be given by Amanda from Missouri. I will read from the Bible. Psalms. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Mark. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. And he goeth up into a mountain, and calleth unto him whom he would. And they came unto him. And he ordained twelve, that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach, and to have power to heal sicknesses, and to cast out devils. Matthew. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars, and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Then, shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved. Let them which be in Judea flee into the mountain. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. When morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death, and they crucified him. In the end of the Sabbath, As it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye. For I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, 
for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly, and tell his disciples he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And Jesus came and speak unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Philippians Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke Friend, go up higher. I will now read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures and from Prose Works by Mary Baker Eddy. Beloved Christian scientists, take courage. God is leading you onward and upward. God's way shower, Christ, points the advanced step. This instructs us how to be abased and how to abound. If we wish to follow Christ, truth, it must be in the way of God's appointing. Jesus said, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. He who would reach the source and find the divine remedy for every ill must not try to climb the hill of science by some other road. We are either turning away from this utterance, or we are listening to it and going up higher. The real Christ was unconscious of matter, of sin, disease, and death, and was conscious only of God, of good, of eternal life and harmony. Hence the human Jesus had to resort to his higher self and relation to the Father, and there could find rest from unreal trials in the conscious reality and royalty of his being. Holding the mortal as unreal and the divine as real. It was this retreat from material to spiritual selfhood which recuperated him or triumph over sin, sickness, and death. The truth uttered and lived by Jesus, who passed on and left to mortals the rich legacy of what he said and did, makes his followers his heirs to his example. But they can neither appreciate nor appropriate his treasures of truth and love until lifted to thee by their own growth and experiences. Another Christmas has come and gone. Has it enabled us to know more of the healing Christ that saves from sickness and sin? Are we still searching diligently 
to find where the young child lies? And are we satisfied to know that our sense of truth is not demoralized, finitized, cribbed, or cradled, but has risen to grasp the spiritual idea uninvironed by materiality? Can we say with the angels today, He is risen, He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Yes, the real Christian scientist can say his Christ is risen and is not the material Christ of creed, but its truth, even as Jesus declares. And the sense of truth of the real Christian scientist is spiritualized to behold this Christ, truth, again healing the sick, and saving sinners. It rejoices me to know that you know that healing the sick, soothing sorrow, brightening this lower sphere with the ways and means of the higher and everlasting harmony brings to light the perfect original man and universe. What nobler achievement, what greater glory can nerve your endeavor. Press on. My heart and hope are with you. Thou art not here for ease or pain, but manhood's glorious crown to gain. Let us watch and pray that we enter not into the temptation of ease and sin, and let us not forget that others before us have laid upon the altar all that we have to sacrifice and have passed to their reward. Thought must be made better and human life more fruitful for the divine energy to move it onward and upward. Warmed by the sunshine of truth, watered by the heavenly dews of love, the fruits of Christian science spring upward and away from the sordid soil of self and matter. Are we clearing the burdens of thought by uprooting the noxious weeds of passion, malice, envy, and strife? Are we picking away the cold, hard pebbles of selfishness, uncovering the secrets of sin, and burnishing anew the hidden gems of love, that their pure perfection shall appear? It is important to know that a malpractice of the best system will result in the worst form of medicine. Moreover, the feverish, disgusting pride of those who call themselves metaphysicians or scientists, but are such in name only, fanned by the breath of mental malpractice, is the death's head at the feast of truth. The monkey in the harlequin jacket that will retard the onward march of life-giving science if not understood and withstood and so strangled in its attempts. The good cannot lose their God, their help in times of trouble. If they mistake the divine command, they will recover it, countermand their order retrace their steps, and reinstate his orders, more assured to press on safely. O Christian scientist, thou of the church of the newborn, awake to a higher and holier love for God and man. Put on the whole armor of truth. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation, that ye may go to the bed of anguish and look upon this dream of life and matter, girt with a higher sense of omnipotence, and behold once again the power of divine life and love to heal and reinstate man in God's own image and likeness. Press on towards the high calling 
whereunto divine love has called us. Divine Presence, breathe thou thy blessing on every heart in this house. May the kingdom of God within you, with you always, reascending, bear you outward, upward, heavenward. <laughs>